What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of B is for Build. Today we are going to be working on quite a few things. We're going to be working on shifter linkage so we can shift the transmission from inside the car, which would be handy. We're going to work on uh, installing our driveline, which just got finished, and we're going to work on the transmission mount. Stay tuned. So like I said, I just got the call from the driveline shop, them letting me know that it is ready to roll. So let's head down to the driveline shop, uh, go check it out, see how much it costs, see how it looks, and get it back to the shop. Taco break. Back in the shop, I got my fancy new driveline. Let me tell you all about this new guy. So it's BRZ on the back end, standard BRZ uh, driveline. Then we have our middle uh, carrier bearing, and then it goes to, this is where it gets tricky. This is the new uh, stuff that we just built to go to uh, the new transmission adapter that I had made. So uh, we, the original one has a slip yoke, and I did look at the markings on the slip yoke from the use on the car, and it was, slipping about a sixteenth of an inch and we wanted to keep that so we put a slip joint in here so this has like a little over an inch of play or so in it so that's good that'll give us that flex and then it goes to a standard um, yoke over here so this is the new drive line that just got made uh, got made by a uh, by uh, driveline express division so huge thanks to them for making that up for me like i said earlier in the video very very quickly now it's not as simple as just having a new drive line made because there is the Toyota transmission is a little bit more tricky than that. Um, the way it's supposed to work is the transmission has a pin that goes out the back and that's a centering pin. And you're supposed to have another drive line that sits in that centering pin and that's how it knows where to spin. It won't get uh, off axis and out of whack. And you have what's called a guibo in the middle and that lets it flex back and forth a little bit. So what I should have been doing is I shouldn't have cut off that centering pin, but I did a long time back. I cut off that centering pin to do my DIY stuff and that's when I basically screwed up my transmission big time and I couldn't use the standard drive lines that it was meant to have. So I wouldn't have had to go this entire route. I could have probably, if I didn't cut that center pin, I could have probably ordered an Aristo drive line, used, they probably won't run you more than $200 and then lengthen or shorten that drive line all you need and I would have been good. But instead I completely hosed myself. So this drive line on the end, we have the four bolt pattern. That's not what my transmission had. So what we had to do was this. I had to go to a machine shop. I took the back of the transmission out. So this is the transmission mounting point right here. And normally that centering pin goes right through here. Um, and we had to, uh, so I took this off and I took it down to a machine shop and I had to have this adapter plate custom made. So since we no longer have a centering pin, we had to have an adapter made exactly on center that bolts up to the back of this exactly on center. So there's no play, there's no wiggle room or anything. It was a very tedious process. It was pretty expensive. Uh, to put it into perspective, this adapter and the work that went into it cost me almost as much as the driveline. Um, and well, it was also a rush job. All this stuff was a rush job. So thanks to everybody that worked on it to get it done in time, uh, to have this build done and not, not a lot of waiting. But um, so yeah, I, I screwed myself by cutting off that center pin. I got this adapter made. So basically this goes into the transmission again. That slides on the slip yoke. You can see the splines there. That slides on, a bolt goes on the back. That holds in all the transmission fluid and all the goodness. And then I'll bolt this onto that, and then the driveline bolts onto this, and we're back in business. So, yeah, I really screwed myself when I tried to do that DIY, but we're out of trouble now. And, uh, you know, that's what BS for Build is about. I'm not really that worried about the unfortunate um, fallout of what happened here. I learned a ton. I learned a lot about drivelines. I learned a lot about a lot of stuff. And uh, nobody got hurt this time. Okay, so let's jump into the car and install all this stuff. Driveline adapter install was simple. Uh, that's all thrown in there, and, and I was gonna go ahead and bolt up the rest of the driveline, which would run back there, but then you can see right here in the top right, that's the shifter linkage, and that was kinda kinda like get in the way of my work. And then the transmission mount, I noticed the exhaust is kinda getting in the way of the work there. So I'm thinking that all the fabrication kinda needs to be done 
um, with as little stuff on as possible, but still enough on that I know what I my what my obstacles are going to be. So, anyways, I'm taking a break from installing the drive line. That'll be really easy. I'll do that later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and uninstall the exhaust, and I'm going to focus on building the shifter linkage. Once we get the shifter linkage done, I think I should build the transmission mount. Once the transmission mount's done and all the fabrication side of things is done, then I can go ahead and reinstall everything. Jumping inside the car to work with the shifter linkage, up here we control the shifter and that changes what's going on down below. So you can see that the BRZ has park, reverse, neutral, and drive. The Aristo is going to have the same, but it's also going to have room for three and two. And if we don't have any chance of ever drifting this car, we're going to need that ability. So coming down here, uh, we have the uh, the kind of map, the slots that is, it's allowed. And I think the length of these is good, meaning when we make one click down here, it'll click the transmission over there if we connect these two things. But we don't have real estate down here for low three and two. So I'm gonna grab the Dremel tool and very lightly make some very serious modifications to make room for three and two. Okay, bad news on that. Even though I, I made the room, when you go down, it can't keep going because it's got like a piece of metal back here that's blocking it when it bottoms out over here. So now it's time to do larger scale modifications to this thing. I'm gonna give up on the whole, I like the notches plan and get rid of all the notches and just try and build it so it goes as far from top to bottom as possible. All right, modifications are complete. I just had to cut into here so I could get a saw blade down there and make some modifications down there that stopped it from blocking. Um, and then we're good. And I can actually get a little bit more room out of here if I need to uh, down here. But before I go too crazy with this, I need to, um, get down and connect to that linkage and start connecting this up with the transmission and see where the shift points actually are on the transmission because I don't know I mean it is kind of Toyota stuff but the odds of them all linking up perfectly I'd say are kind of slim so uh, next job get underneath connect the pivot point to this to the transmission over there with some sort of connecting rod and then start to test shift All right, so I adjusted the lower connecting rod and it's now connected to the transmission and it's connected to this guy. So it's time to give it the first try ever. So we're coming out and was that a gear? Did I get it? Wow. All right, so that's reverse and, and it's matching up. This is exciting for me. So the, the pattern on the shifter is matching up with what's going on in the transmission. So you probably can't hear it, but that's it, that's it shifting out of reverse or out of park into reverse. So now one more down, that's neutral. I don't really know. Yeah, that should be neutral. Okay, and then we got drive is gonna be the next one. And then low three, Let's see if we can get low two. Oh, we don't have enough real estate for low two. But we got every other, it's like we're halfway there. I just tap it and it'll go into low three. Uh, let's see, going back up drive, neutral, reverse, park. Damn, we're getting close. I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start modifying this and get myself a little bit more real estate so I can have the low, low, low. Yeah! All right, so I modified the rest of the shifting mechanism inside the cabin to get enough to get into that lowest gear. And I was wrong, it's actually, uh, with the Aristo, it's drive and then the drive slash third, you bump it over to go third, which I don't have the computerized stuff in mind, so there's not gonna be any bumping it over to go third. And then one more down is second, and then the last one is the lowest lowest. So I won't be using that anyways, but it's good to have. So here is our shifter linkage, and you can see that I modified it, but I only tack welded this before. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind the rest of this off, weld it all the way up, paint it, and then we'll go ahead and do the full reinstallation, uh, button this up. It's pretty simple. This has a, a push pin that gets a cotter pin through the back, and then this bolts onto the bottom of the shifter. And we'll button up the shifter inside and give it one last test. Shifter linkage is all buttoned up, and so we're in park right now, and then we're gonna go into reverse, neutral, drive, uh, two, and low. There we go, and low, low to two, two to drive, drive to neutral, reverse, 
and park. So it's really cool that we can keep this thing here because basically you can't like bump it out of park. Uh, if you're in reverse, you can't really like bump it out of reverse. When you're in drive, it's not a really big deal if you accident, well, I guess, you know, it could get scary if you drop it down low, but uh, for the most part, um, you know, drive bumping it into neutral or whatever, that's how the car was designed to be able to do that. So not too worried about it. But that's awesome. We got our shifter. What's up guys, it's a new day. I gotta say I'm really happy with the way that that shifter linkage came together. That is a really smooth, really crisp, good feeling. And I honestly didn't think it would come out that good, but I'm really, really happy that it did. I mean, we got lucky with the fact that each notch happened to be a shifter throw on this transmission as well as on the shifter. To probably the engine's probably 10 years older than the car, but we got lucky. So that's good. And I'm excited because we are now on the last piece of fabrication. I gotta build a transmission mount. I've never done this before. Uh, it looks pretty simple. It's just a bunch of steel that basically goes into your tunnel and then it goes across to support the transmission. I should be able to fabricate something like that. And then this is the last big piece of fabrication on the car, period. There's other stuff that we're gonna be adding to it and other things like that, but this is the last necessary piece of fabrication. So I'm really excited to get started on this. I think this is gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna give me a chance to test out my welding skills and fabrication skills, among other things. So I'm stoked, let's get started. I'm gonna jump you down underneath the car and give you a little preview of what I'm gonna try and build. All right, so transmission mount. Here's our transmission, it comes back here and it's kind of free hanging all the way back here. So it needs to be mounted and supported by this place right here that you see right here. That's why it's got these nice bushings in there and everything like that. So we're gonna keep this stock mount bushing setup and the bolt pattern and everything like that. And we're gonna build off of that. So uh, what needs to happen is I need to stop being lazy and finally drop this exhaust down. You can see we did all the shifter linkage without the exhaust, uh, that's the shifter linkage, without the exhaust being dropped. So I'm gonna drop the exhaust down and then uh, I need to go ahead and clean up these sides because these sides line up with exactly where this is, unfortunately. So um, these have to be cleaned up so they're completely flush and we can work off of them. And what we're gonna do is we are going to build some L brackets that are gonna bolt into the side of the car here, come down. Now I may weld them in. I gotta talk to a friend that's welded right here before, but what I'm worried about is I don't have anybody else in the shop right now and if I weld right here, I get this too hot, I could catch the interior of the car on fire and not even know it. I'd be down here and that could be really dangerous. So. For the time being, I'm thinking about bolts. Uh, that's how some other kits, I've, I've looked at multiple kits that have been sold online and that's how they do it. They bolt into the side of the car here. So anyways, uh, an L bracket is gonna come off of here uh, and then we're gonna run a straight plate across and then back to another L bracket here. So we're building a plate that is just, you know, gonna, going to bolt up to this uh, four bolt bolt pattern. Uh, right here and then bolt into our L bracket. Now obviously this isn't in its final mounting place, it needs to be up a little bit higher so there's going to be a jack in here when we get it all mocked up and everything like that. But first steps first, we got to go ahead drop the exhaust, um, clean up these sides and then start mocking up our L brackets with some cardboard and then we'll cut them out of metal and work from there. All right, I've changed up my design idea for this uh, uh, transmission mount uh, because I think this is gonna be a little bit better and stronger, so here's the idea. Uh, imagine this is the transmission tunnel. We're gonna take square bar like this, uh, except with a little bit thicker sidewall, and we're gonna lay a piece about this wide on one side of it and that wide on the other side of it. So there's basically a ledge now on the inside of the transmission tunnel. It goes like this, and there's a ledge. Then we'll take very thick steel and run that across the ledge, and then that's where it will bolt in. So this piece of steel will be able to come in and out, and the ledge will always stay there. And I'm gonna weld this ledge from the bottom and from the top onto the wall of the transmission tunnel. I think that'll be plenty strong and uh, I think that's the best way I'm gonna get welds in there. I looked at some of my buddies that have done this and they've welded on there, so hopefully I won't catch the car on fire. So the first thing I gotta do is get the right uh, steel bar, cut the lengths that we need, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut caps of uh, steel, square caps that are exactly the size, and weld end caps on there to strengthen this steel even more.
Now that we've got our two awesome rectangular boxes of metal, it's still really hot, all welded up and, and fancy, it's time to uh, let those cool down, uh, jump underneath the car, start mocking those up into position. I'm gonna go ahead and like kind of duct tape them into the car in position, and then we'll start figuring out how long our cross member needs to be so we can cut our cross member and prepare it, and then we're gonna drill our holes in both of these things and get everything ready to be kind of placed inside the car. All right, we're about halfway done. It should be uh, getting a little bit more visible of what we're doing here. These two square pieces get welded into the transmission tunnel, and this piece is bent and everything to match up these angles and have a perfectly level bottom, which then bolts up to the bottom of that transmission mount bushing. Uh, this piece of metal is not thick enough to do all the work, so I'm gonna double it up. I'm gonna build another piece of metal exactly identical to this one, put it on top, and weld them all the way around so they're two pieces of metal welded together to get that thickness that I'm gonna need to be strong enough. So that's what's left is I got to do another piece of metal, weld them all together, and then drill holes because this is right now temporarily tack welded in here so I don't lose my placement. But um, then I'm going to have to break those tacks off and drill holes in these bad boys uh, through here and here and throw my bolts in through there and there. That way uh, it can bolt to these things that will be permanently welded into the transmission tunnel. All right, progress. This is all welded up. You can see the seam here is all welded up on both sides. The holes are drilled for the hardware to run through. That's where the hardware is gonna go through. Uh, but I'm gonna still leave these tack welds in here for a second longer. Next step, we're gonna go back under the car. Um, we're gonna weld these two, these two guys into the transmission tunnel. It's uh, gonna suck really bad because I'm gonna use the MIG welder and it's gonna be upside down. So a lot of it's gonna fall on me and it's gonna burn real good. Uh, but hopefully I won't catch the car on fire. I'm doing it because it's going to be a little bit less heat. Um, so fingers crossed, don't catch the car on fire, don't burn myself too badly, and we get both of these guys inside the transmission tunnel. Then we can measure out where the transmission mount bushing lands on here so we can drill our holes, and then we just bolt the transmission mount on there and we're good to go. That's some stressful work, not catching the car on fire. I think that's the scariest thing that I've ever done on this car and possibly any car, knowing what's at risk. But that's all done. And progress. This is, uh, the holes are drilled in this, so that's where the uh, transmission bushing mount bushing thing goes in. So I guess this is like a transmission mount cross member and then there's obviously the bushing that goes through here. So what's left, I gotta jump, I gotta paint this, I gotta jump under the car, uh, paint everything that we welded in there so none of it starts to rust too soon, and uh, then bolt everything up and we're all done with the transmission mount. Here we go, let's get done. Here's a final look at the transmission mount installed. All the installation went like easy breezy. Um, so obviously here's the two things that we welded on the body here and there. And then there's the two holes in them, bolts going down through there. And then the uh, transmission mount bushing thing that has its own bolts that come down through there. And then we threw nuts on all of those and we're all mounted up. Transmission's a little bit higher than it was before, uh, which gives us clearance on that um, shifter linkage right there and I feel like it's in a really good spot as far as being level with the rest of the car and everything like that. But I'm no expert when it comes to that stuff, but I do think it's right. On to the next thing. 
All right, this episode got started with the delivery of our new drive line, and then we got sidetracked, obviously, onto our shifter linkage and then onto our transmission mount. But now it's time to do the drive line. Let's bring this thing home and install our new drive line. All right, drive line installation went off without a hitch. How's it gonna drive? I'm gonna find out tomorrow. I'm pretty stoked on that. I just, I just realized that tomorrow I get to drive a 2JZ powered BRZ for the first time. And um, I'm, I'm very, very amped on that. There's a few final touches that we're gonna be doing in the next episode and then it's gonna be the shakedown and we will probably end that episode with the shakedown. Uh, and then we got a couple more mods to do and then it's off to the dyno. So things are looking really promising. I'm very, very excited. Next episode though, this car is getting out of the shop and we're gonna go drive it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you like Boost for Build and you want to help out and support, we are still doing a Tuna Crate collaboration, but it's, we're on the last few days of that. So head in the link in the description if you're interested. That is an affiliate link, so picking up a Tuna Crate through that link helps out Beas for Build. If you don't want a Tuna Crate and you want something else, head over to BSForBuild.com. Scroll down to the shop. You can pick yourself up all the Beas for Build decals, uh, flag, shop flags, shirts, hats, key tags. We got awesome key tags. Um, <laughs> I just noticed that mine's not on my keys again for some reason. Uh, other than that, follow us on social media. We are BS for Build on everything. So pick your favorite one, head over to that, follow us, BS for Build. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really, really amped for this next one. I'm very, very happy that everything came together here. Uh, that shifter linkage is 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 seriously like slick. It, it feels perfect. The the transmission mount came together, and that drive line I have high hopes for. So I just think this is shaping up to be a really reliable build, which has got me really amped. So, all right, we'll, we'll deal with all that in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace.